What I want to talk about primarily is plant responses and water. We can't do anything about how much water falls, but we can do a lot about how much water gets in the ground, how long it stays there, and whether it gets evaporated out or runs through a plant first. Things that I look for is a diversity of plants. I want some that are deep-rooted, some that are fibrous-rooted. A lot of you will look at this and you say, that's that old wild alfalfa and that ain't good for anything. And the cow won't eat that. But it's got a root this big around that will go plumb to China. And that will get water deeper into the profile. It's a legume, so it's going to provide nutrients to the grasses. We've got We've got some old world blue stem coming in here. A lot of people will say, oh, a Shetland pony with a saddle on won't eat that. Is that true? It looks like they've been eating it here, right? And it's a bunch grass. It's deeper rooted. It's going to be more productive. It's not going to be as high a quality as buffalo grass, but we got plenty of buffalo grass. We can get a little more carrying capacity and we can get more water into the ground with that bunch grass. The other thing that I look for is, is that ground covered? And covered, I mean, I am wanting every square inch of dirt with something on top of it, either a leaf standing or some dead plant material on the ground. The more cover we can get and the longer we can keep it there, the less water we're going to have run off, the less dirt we're going to have carried away, and the better things are going to do. Those deep tap-rooted plants, lots of people think of them as weeds. But they're loosening that ground way down deep. The other thing about those forbs, which is what they really are, when this grass is 6 to 9% crude protein, those forbs are going to be 12 to 18. So it doesn't take a whole lot of those forbs to mix with some grass, and we've got a really well-balanced diet. What, di what difference does the fire make? Where do they go first? On to the burned area, or do they go other places? On to the burned area. And they're going to stay there. I mean, they're going to keep coming back just to see if something has grown, right? If I've got part of a pasture that burned, and I don't want them concentrating there, then I'm going to have to do something to keep them off of it, at least part of the time. That effect, in my experience, will go for up to two years. And so you've got to be cognizant of that as you start managing after a fire. Make sure you get that cover back before you start doing other things.